Hey everybody. Uh, yeah, so I thought I'd just get started and kind of make a video on topology. And this is just going to me kind of going over the concepts more behind and the fundamentals of what you want to look for when you're doing character-based topology. What I mean by character-based topology is more you can't just slap on a generic um, realistic you know, topology on top of this and expect for everything to work just great. It's, um, you'd have to cut it up and it'd probably be more trouble than it would be worth. So this is a quick way um, I use to redirect uh, polyflow. And if you look at this, it is a level two subdivided mesh out of ZBrush. And it's a mess, basically. It has no topology, no edge flow. Um, yeah, I think I sculpted it out of like a Dynamesh sphere or something like that. So, um, yeah, what we, we want to do is make this a little bit more efficient. And I do believe it's necessary. It's very, very important to know this, actually, how to do this. It's You'll learn a lot about form as you kind of figure things out. Um, so this is just the way that I do it, and this is a plugin in um, in Maya 8.5. It's Next Deraster, and this is just the way I've always done it. So um, it's not meant to be, you know, the funnest part of the process, but but it is necessary to know. So I'm just going to kind of dive in. And thanks, by the way, for all you know the positive comments I got, just all around positive comments on uh, this character Jervis, the designing. I've been developing him for a while, and also uh, Amy, thank thank you for that feedback. That was good. Um, both probably of these are going to end up on my reel sometime when I get a little more time to render things. So here we go. Uh, what I have right now set up is just basically a Lambert. Blue Lambert, any color, you know, different from gray, it doesn't really matter. Because we're going to have a gray material on top uh, that we retopologize. So I'm just going to turn down the transparency a little bit. And uh, that's what we kind of want to have going for us right now. And I made a layer um, and I put that on it and I'm just going to turn that on to reference so we can't select it we're not going to be bothered by that it's not going to interfere with us as we do this so let's just go in I'm going to load up my plugin here um, it's called Quadra and we're just going to start drawing points and you press shift in the middle of those four points and you can create a polygon and you cut that in half um, by holding down the shift at the edge right here. So uh, we can just kind of. I always like to start at the cheek just because I feel like that's the base of um, this, the whole thing that we're going to set up here. We have the eye loop, the mouth loop, and this is kind of like right in the middle. We're only going to do half of it because we can mirror it over to the other side. And um, so here we go. Uh, we have that. Now we're just going to kind of. Um, create a polygon that's going to represent the eye socket as it is right under the eye and we are going to make that make that another one here and already we have half of the eye socket laid out for us already and we'll keep going further with this and now we have the entire eye socket and we also have a great start at the cheek here now this is a very key point I'm going to make a very important loop and I'm I'm just going to use a little it's a program that I can draw so it's a loop that goes over the nose and all the way around the mouth 
I'm going to go all the way around there. And this is extremely important as well as another one that just goes around the mouth like that. And there's another one that goes around the nose. And then you just kind of have to connect these all together. So we're going to continue with this. There we go. So we are a few minutes into this video. We already have one of the main key loops for character modeling. And that's right here. That's very important to have that. So can't stress that enough um, when you're starting to kind of learn how to, how to do the topology is that you you try and create that loop as soon as possible because once you have that you have a very good start and a segue into the rest of the topology so now we are going to create another loop all right, this is kind of finicky, and sometimes you just have to move move things around very close until you can get them to cooperate with the way you want them to. And there's another very important loop there. So we've got the mouth, we've got this one, and we have the eye socket. Now I'm going to get the nostril loop in there which is very important too and the reason why on the nose I I really like to to start the loop on the under part of the nose is because the design is built that way where it's actually flat underneath the nose so yeah anytime you can you know get your topology to work around your design that's um, you know definitely take advantage of that so you can already see we have we have a very good base on how to how to how to set this up. So this is not a very um, this is not everyone's favorite part, as I've said, and it definitely takes a while to get good at this. Um, there were certain points that I struggled with when I first was learning topology and part of it was this nose area and kind of the the mouth and the lips area and how that kind of plays out so but I'm not going to go over I'm not going to do all the topology in this video I'm going to do that in a time-lapse video so it's not going to be just me commenting on this this whole process that would be very boring uh, but I did think it was important for me to say a little bit about what I know about this and so let's see um, the ear very similar principles that we would do here first of all I would create um, a structure that goes around there and then I would build inward um, that, that's how I'd handle that so Let's see. Oh yeah, something that's important is you want to have a lot of kind of narrow edge loops towards the uh, corners of the eye. So that's pretty important. And then we can just build um, some close edge loops to make a nice um, sharp eyelid that we'll want and uh, I'm gonna keep going just a little further and then I'm going to cut this short just because I wanted to give you just a basic understanding of how this is gonna gonna work here so and once you have every loop in let's see, come on Once you have every loop in, you can start to think about 
there is obviously going to be a loop that goes around the entire face that houses all the loops in, inside and let's see how is that going to look uh, we're not going to do it like that uh, let's see well you kind of actually have to just build it up as you go so we have the eye socket in and we're going to next create the the brow which is also very important one two three four five little five pole there you're always going to have a five pole you just have to know exactly where the best possible place is to put it and as I've said it's it's usually where there's a uh, prominent landmark or a change of uh, uh, a change of a f major form change which is uh, right below the cheekbone you can see that just silhouetted right here that that's a huge major form change on this this character so that makes sense for me to put it there and when you get further along you can finally just connect these uh, once you get kind of confident about the flow going in I'm just going to add a subdivision right here but the main thing to keep in mind when you're doing this is always think um, in terms of halves like you can always add geometry in between the halves so you kind of have to understand how Maya smooths things in a way actually it's just um, you know dividing basically Come on. Might have to move that a little bit. There we go. A little buggy. Sorry about that. Um, and I'm going to use this as to represent the just the the lips here. I, I always like to find a nice little outpost for the vertices and I'm always very comfortable with putting them right on the uh, the lip right there. So it just becomes sort of a habit. So anything you know that you can find like that that works for you, definitely, definitely do that. Okay, so you can kind of see how you might finish this off now. Um, obviously, I'm not going to go into this entire thing. That would be that'd be mental. <laughs> but <laughs> uh, I just thought it was necessary to kind of give my two cents about topology. So um, that's obviously I hope you got something from this video and just keep in mind that I'm actually going to be using this tool to make the facial hair and everything so uh, that's how I'm going to be doing that. It's it's pretty nice because you can you know once you've already um, well designed the character you can kind of design on top of it which is you know all these uh, vertices that just snap right onto the, the mesh underneath so it's uh, it's not too bad. Um, I really like using this tool and hopefully you guys um, will get something from it from watching me do this. And I think I'm just about to finish. Yeah, you see how that would continue. You just go down from the jaw and yeah um, I'll just do a really quick thing to show how, how you might want to connect these um, these things here so uh, okay we'll have you know this one that comes in right around here and you have a loop that'll go around here um, everything will sort of flow into you know the all the loops will flow into the mouth or the nose or the ears um, But yeah, like like I was saying, this this part is kind of tricky because, like right right around in here, just finding the um, the correct star to to get that going is it's 
not super hard, but it it takes some time to to get that right. Uh, yeah, and of course you'd have a lot of close edges right around this um, the uh, the eye line there. So just something to think about. Uh, yeah, I hope, hope you guys have gotten something from this video, and maybe I'll make some more in the future, just going on certain things. And yeah, so thanks for watching.